welcome. Access Sportsnet Laker, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers, Chris McGee, James Worthy, Robert Ori, Allie Clifton, Brez and Trudell will be working the locker room Zoom interviews. The Lakers beat the Rockets, AD a double-double. The defense was swarming, um, kind of killed the Rockets' spirit there a bit. Caruso, a great game, 16 points. Second chance points were 17 to 1 in favor of the Lakers. LeBron, an assist shy of a triple-double. All-around great game. Outside of the last seven minutes of that game, a complete dominant performance. Lakers now take control of the series at 3-1, James. Yeah, with, with the exception of, uh, you know, playing the lead, which is a, a lot of teams get guilty of when they get a big lead, uh, it was a flawless game, I thought. Uh, defensively, I just think they're where they need to be to win a championship. Uh, also, I thought they spread the love around a lot tonight. Uh, 30 assists, that's what they want to get. Moving the ball, a lot of that has to do with Rondo in the game. Uh, 62 points in the paint. They dominated inside. And then they had 19 fast break points, something they, they got going as well, too. But I thought the defense, you know, uh, was exceptional. And, and they took they took Harden right out of his game. And the Rockets didn't make any adjustments. They were able to double-team him, get the ball out of his hands. Uh, and I thought that was just an exceptional uh, game plan. And, you know, bringing in Tucker, starting Mars, great moves. It was, it was a lot of great moves by the coaches. They came out with a lot of... Uh, Ferocity. They wanted to set an example of this team. Like, hey, this is a, this is a, we're a championship team. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the first game you won, that's because you know you, you caught us off balance. But now we're going to show you what we do when we recuperate and we get in and we game plan. And that's the sign of championship teams. That's what they do. They adjust, they learn from their mistakes, and then they go out and execute. And I thought their defense execution tonight was perfect. The rotation was awesome. But you know. The only fault they had was in that fourth quarter where they had six turnovers. And as a championship-quality team, you cannot have six turnovers, especially with a team like the Houston Rockets, who are deadly from three, and they got hot in the second half from three. That's why they got back in this ball game. Yeah, it also shows you, you know, the difference between regular season, when you hop around from city to city, you can, the Rockets are a really good team. You get them in a seven-game series. By game three, the Lakers made the adjustments that they needed to make, and it was a different ball game. They, they just kind of dominated them in this game. All right, right, let's go back to Orlando. Alex Caruso's with Mike Trudell. All right, Alex Caruso, uh, you guys had built a huge lead in that fourth quarter. You were on the court for some of that Houston run back until you get that corner three to go. Uh, what did you think happened there? Did you guys let your foot off the gas pedal a little bit? A little bit. Yeah, we did. You know, uh, I think we came out and scored nine points in the first three minutes, and then we kind of went uh, stalemate on offense. You know, we, we slowed down a little, and then uh, bad turnovers. I had one of them uh, late in the game, and that's that's the key against Houston. You know, that's the only way I think they have a chance of coming back. And, and obviously, we didn't close out the game well, but, you know, a win's a win, and, and we're not going to overlook that. I mentioned that corner three uh, that LeBron dished out, and you hit it, Alex, the dagger in the final minute. What did you see on that play, and how does that feel just hitting a shot like that in a big playoff spot? Playoff spot. Yeah, I mean, I've been working on taking that shot all season, knowing that Braun is is a good basketball player and that he makes the right basketball play late in the game. Uh, me and me and Miles Simon have been shooting corner threes all year, talking about Braun's going to throw throw it to me in the playoffs. I'm going to be ready to shoot it. Um, just stay ready, you know. I, I didn't shoot the ball well in seeding games and in Portland series, but I've been working and, and confident in myself every time I shoot it. So uh, it's just just another shot. You just got to be ready to shoot. You know, you've played some elite defense uh, all season long, Alex, this series on James Harden, sometimes Westbrook. What has worked for you and also just the team? Aside from that fourth quarter, it's been just a dominant defensive effort for you. Yeah, just competing, man. You know, that's part of the playoffs is just playing every possession like it's the last possession of the game. Um, and, you know, when we when we have a five-guy rotation, no matter who's out there, uh, whether it's small ball, big uh, big lineup or something in between, as long as we got five guys connected, we're, we're top defense in the league, in my opinion. So uh, it's just about us going out there and, and being locked in and doing it. You know, in stretches tonight and in the series, we've been locked in. You've seen it show up. Uh, we just got to be consistent with it. Alex, last thought from you. Uh, just a, a quick summary of what you expect in the potential closeout game for you guys. You know Houston's not going to lay over. Yeah, I mean, you saw tonight. They're not going to go down without a fight. Uh, that's that's how they play. AD, they don't want to out of any game, so uh, we, we got to be ready to play 48 minutes uh, game five. Appreciate it, Alex. We've talked a lot about the Laker bench, and as you said, Shaq used to call them the other guys uh, that you need to win 
championships. Rondo for two games, absolutely incredible. We've talked about Kuz and how efficient he was uh, in games two and three. Marcus Morris hitting four threes coming off the bench. Now in that, sorry, Markeith Morris uh, now in that starting role. Um, Alex Caruso tonight was that guy. Uh, we always call him the guy that has all the intangibles. James picked him as his four on the floor. <laughs> uh, he always does the stuff that doesn't show up in the box score, mm -hmm. but tonight it did. A uh, huge three down 16 points. Rob, for a guy playing in his first time in the playoffs, how impressed have you been with Alex Caruso? I'm, I'm very impressed because I look at experience. I look at when Caruso's playing, then I look at some other guy playing with Denver, I'm not going to call him out, who showed how being his first time playing, he messed up. But this goes you four years of college, playing with LeBron, and learning as the course of the season, going, being put in that position to um, compete on a high level, being in that position to compete when it matters. And that's what's the key. It's, it, people say, oh, what is he doing in the fourth quarter? Now, that's crunch time because he is a crunch time player. He is the type of player that's going to come off that bench. And like he said, he did have that one uh, full power right there, full power right there when he threw it away. But he doesn't make many mistakes. He plays hard. And as you can see, LeBron trusts him down the stretch. He knocks down that three in the corner. I think, James, the concern always was, oh, when Rondo comes back, does Caruso lose his minutes? And Vogel continued to say, and LeBron continued to say, we trust Alex Caruso. He's going to be a guy that's a part of that closing rotation. Uh, and he has been. And, and he has earned that, James, how he plays off ball, how he plays with stars around him, how he plays his role. And as Rob says, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. When he hits shots like tonight, unbelievable. Yeah, you know, he, he's what I call a, a late bloomer. Someone who started out a, a little slow, struggled in the G League, but he's a coach's dream. And a lot of people talk about his hustle and his tenacity. Caruso has a very high cue for the game. He really does on his defensive end particularly. He watches the, 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 the game plan and the film and all that, and you can see how he reads people. He anticipates passes, you know, puts his hand in the passing lane, and now his offense is starting to catch up. And when all those things come together, you're, took, you're talking about a, an extremely efficient, solid player who any coach would love to have. He's not like a, a big-time scorer. Yeah. You know, he can score 16 points tonight. But his impact on the game, it's, it's just remarkable what he does, especially on the defensive end. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up you and where you watched the games and that nice little victory, victory cigar you had tonight while watching the game. You saw that? Yeah, well, you put it out there on social media <laughs> oh, and, and be more a producer and Allie. We, yeah. we, we had a good time with it. Yeah. You come back and yeah, I'm, I'm going to bring a grill Give me uh, <laughs> and put it, set it up outside. We're going to have a little COVID-19 cookout. Listen, we talked in the pregame show about uh, the Rockets' three-point shooting. So 19 times now this year, including playoffs and regular season, they've shot 40% or better from three. Okay, 19 times. They're 16 and three. The three losses are the last three games in this series. One, two, three by the Lakers. It's about the rest of the stuff the Lakers are doing. They're not getting as many three-point attempts off. They only shot 32 three-point three attempts. That's not a lot for this Houston Rockets team. Defensively, this team absolutely swarming. Plus 38 points in the paint. Plus 26 in rebounding. 17 to 1 in second chance points. The Lakers are rotating. You, you talked about this already. They're rotating. They're getting hands in the face, and they're getting rebounds. Yeah. The thing is, you got to make the you got to make a team uncomfortable. And when you get the Rockets off the three point line, they become very uncomfortable. They don't know what to do because Dan Tony has put in their mind that they have to shoot threes in order to win. You can see where they have a layup, they're kicking it out. Even on their layups, they're unsure about the layups, and that's allowing AD to get blocks, that's allowing Crusoe to get blocks, that's allowing you know all the other guys, even LeBron, to get blocks. So. That's the thing about the Rockets. If you run them off that three-point line, they don't know what to do. And, and that's the problem with analyticals because you shoot threes, now you know threes to be shot. You don't know what to do as a team. And you can see in the first three quarters, the Lakers ran the Rockets off the three-point line. They didn't know what to do. And the only thing that kept them in the game was shooting free throws. Veteranism over analyticalism. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. The isms. <laughs> I wish I would have came up with that. Uh, <laughs> but it's true, James. Like, defensively, you're watching this Laker team the last three games. <clears throat> and, and you heard Stan and them talking about it during the game. Like, it, it, this, this team is elite. They have been all year. But when they're dialed in, and now you, you were saying this, you were watching it, the matchups. They're playing those. Everyone's on a string. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's you know, and, different and, look. In game one, the Lakers rock his hands. Yeah. In this game, tonight, 
the Rockets played right into the Lakers' hands because they didn't make any adjustments. Harden wants to start out high where he can see everything, get that angle. They kept him out there. They double-teamed him out high, and that disrupted their whole offense. They never made any adjustments throughout the game. But I do think the Lakers' uh, defense, is, is, it's not their offense is not, going, is not going to win it for them. And they have a high-powered offense with LeBron and AD, and now they're starting to knock down threes. It's their defense is what gets them going. I mean, they can score points and win games without playing great defense because they're that talented. But when they go down and, and you know, progress throughout the playoffs, they got to keep this going because it's their bread and butter right now. How many times have you seen AD get those kind of blocks, control them, Rob, and then lead a break? I mean, that for me is my defensive player. No, no, no disrespect, but that kind of impact on the defense. Oh, no doubt. When you're able to control a block and have the ball skills to go down the court and then either take it to the rack or find an open play, you're a special type of player. And there's not many of those people out there. And it's the hard part is people say, why he didn't block that? But he blocks it in a way where he can control it, he can start a break, or he can do a long pass. And, and there's only like maybe like three or four guys in the NBA now, That's and he's playing with one of them, LeBron, and Jokic is the other one that can see he can block a shot, grab it, and kick it down yeah. for an easy, easy bucket. Good win for the Lakers. Let's show it to you. Lakers are uh, 3-1, to one, looking to go up 3-1. to one.